Hey YouTube world, I am back with another video. Today I want to talk about fashion, transparency, and sustainability. I know left and right we are hearing the Dior scandal, the Balenciaga, the Laurel Piana. It seems like all of these big luxury brands are getting into trouble left and right and every other month. So as a consumer, how do we navigate through this madness that is happening right now? Because it feels like we have to tread very carefully. And we all know that we are choosing specific bags, specific pieces as a way to express ourselves, right? What is our ideology? What do I represent? And the bags that I choose, the clothing that I wear, and the lifestyle that I lead is a representation of myself. So feels like there's not a whole lot of brands to choose from anymore. And I want to kind of talk about that. Obviously, do your own research, but I want to talk about that so that you have this information and know how to do your own research and really stand for what you want to purchase in the future. So let's just get right into it. Before I jump into the bulk of it, I want to preface this as this is all for information's sakes. This is your opportunity to learn a little bit about the rabbit hole I went down for you. Do your own research, do your own due diligence as you would for any bag that you're purchasing for yourself or any item that you're purchasing for yourself. Everything I say is my opinion because I will interpret some of this in my own words and opinion. Everything is alleged, so don't come for me. Disclosures, disclosures, disclosures. That is all I'm gonna say. Let's move forward. So yeah, I went down a pretty extreme rabbit hole. Look at all the notes I've taken. There's literally like six pages of this. But what sparked this idea of this video is watching Caitlin Plosky. I don't think that's how she is. She's like this Australian um, YouTuber that's pretty famous. She's been in the luxury world and she got rid of most of her luxury you know, prior to the whole trend. She's the one that brought up the fashion transparency index. And it was all because of the Dior scandal. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna talk about the Dior scandal. There's a million videos and everybody's opinion on that. We've beaten that horse to death. So that's not what I'm focusing on today. What I'm focusing on today is to tell you how there are resources out there that you can take a look at and decide for yourself if this is the right brand for you, if this is the right company that you want to support and spend your hard earned money. And it seems like in the world of fashion and you know the large fashion brands we all know that it is the statistic where fashion itself as a whole is one of the worst offenders when it comes to sustainability deforestation deforestation if i can talk um, and pollution in the world so i think there are a lot of uh, organizations out there but the one that she mentioned she's the one that introduced to me and i was like oh this is pretty interesting the general theme that i have found is that transparency is key in terms of setting up regulations and making rules so that these companies do not abuse human capital rights and of course all the resources that we have in this world the EU is coming up with new regulations and of course 12 new companies are under investigation. And I watch all these videos and arguments and all it comes down to is the supply chain and the suppliers and the lack of transparency, which I guess this is why um, the fashion transparency index came about. And what they do is an annual report that covers the top 200 50 fashion companies that are out there. How they pick these 250 companies is with these three criteria. Number one, annual turnover of more than 400 million US dollars. Number two, to represent a spread of market segments, including high street, luxury, sportswear, accessories, footwear, and denim. Number three, to represent a global geographic spread from across Europe, North America, South America, Asia, and Africa. They break it down into five different key areas that they rate these companies on and produce this due diligence report on an annual basis. Number one, policies and commitments. Do you even have any? Has your company even created your own policies and commitments of what you will do to create a sustainable practice? Number two, governance. If you did come up with these policies and commitments, who's enforcing this? Do you have a department? Do you have the CEO? Who's accountable for this? Number three, supply chain traceability. 
Where are your materials coming from? Who are the workers when it comes to your suppliers, right? Number four, know, show, and fix. Basically, it kind of feels, when I'm reading through this, it, it kind of like all kind of intermingles, so to speak, but they explained it as, what are your audit processes, your due diligence? What are your due diligence? And what are they doing about it to fix any, any problems that arise? Number five, spotlight issues, which includes subcategories, I believe, living wages, decent work, gender and racial equality, sustainable sourcing and materials, overconsumption, water and chemical and deforestation, climate change, fossil fuels. So this particular organization, which is the Fashion Revolution, which I forgot to mention, they send out an annual questionnaire to show data to review all of their suppliers. They rate them, the uh, transparency of that. And this group basically fact checks. And it sounds like there's like 15 to 30 different prestigious titles of all backgrounds. And they it seems like they do it over the desk. They don't do it in person. It doesn't seem like they have the ability to go out to the actual manufacturers and fact check them, right? It seems like they're doing mostly over, over the desk and maybe making a couple phone calls. So what I found kind of interesting is that this fashion transparency index is a pretty prestigious one because Morningstar uses this particular index for sustainable investment category. And I come from the wealth management world. Morningstar is a very prestigious and respected um, organization, company, that is known for their research. So what portfolio managers will use this particular transparency, fashion transparency index as information for them to do stock picking or portfolio management, right? They want to help their clients to make money, hence they need to have proper information. So that kind of validates it for me in my eyes. Once they have gone through the you know fact checks and doing their due diligence over the phone, whatever it is, they get a scoring between one to a hundred. One hundred being the most transparent, one being the least transparent. Maybe I think it also meant that if you got a score of a zero or one, you didn't even turn in the report. You get invited to fill out this report, but you don't have to. Nobody's like forced to do it or anything. But one being the most quote unquote transparent. Remember, I'm gonna go over all of these like notable brands in our little community. Remember when I give these scores to you. It is about transparency, not how good the company is. So keep that in mind. The highest company of transparency got a rating of 83%. And apparently in 2023, they were the highest and the first time to go over 80% transparency. And it's an Italian company called OVS. I've never heard of them. Apparently they own a bunch of clothing brands or clothing stores. The next notable in our little world it, at 80%, their rating of transparency at 80% was Gucci. Shocking, right? <laughs> H&M had its rating of 71%. Fendi was at 58%. All of Balenciaga, Bottega, and Saint Laurent all scored 51%, which I found kind of funny because it seems like Gucci, Balenciaga, the Caring Group, all of these companies are rated separately, even though they all fall under the Caring umbrella. They all ranked at the higher end of transparency and showing off, showing off what their, you know, supply chains, et cetera, et cetera, their human rights, pay, regulations are all pretty transparent. Moving on, Coach has a transparency scoring of 42%. Chloe was at 43%. Burberry was at 38%. Both Prada and Miu Miu scored 34%, Celine at 30, Dior and Louis Vuitton has a transparency percentage rating of 29, Marc Jacobs and Hermes is at 28, Ferragamo and Versace is at 24, Valentino at 18, and no surprise here, Chanel only scored 11%. Some of the other random ones that were under 5%, Longchamp, Dolce & Gabbana, Tory Burch, uh, and Tom Ford all scored under 5%. So I found that pretty interesting, right? And transparency is going to be a key way for government and other organizations to kind of like, you know, shake their finger at them. If I know what's going on, I can actually call you out on it, right? And I also looked at other, and everything I'm talking about and where I you know, did all of my research and reading, I'll link down for you, for you below. The Fashion Transparency Index <laughs> reports, 
I obviously did not read every single page. It was like 150 pages, but I did get the key points for you. If you want to uh, enlighten yourself with some bedtime reading, definitely go check that out. The other one I will reference, I read a lot of articles, but this one is pretty noteworthy, is an interview um, by the business of fashion. And between these two experts, they also said the same thing, transparency is key. And the reason why they say that is that they have a lot to hide. So I agree, right? But at the end of the day, I also want to know, and if you ever do any studies or research, always take a look at who is funding this organization, who is you know, funding this particular study or rating or due diligence report. The fashion revolution was funded or is funded by Lodes Foundation. Wasn't familiar with them, so I said, kept clicking on multiple links. And the Lodes Foundation is funded by the Brenkenico Meyer, name below here, and they have a very long history. They've been around in existence since the 1800s, and obviously they own a bunch of clothing stores. So I thought that was pretty interesting. This Lowe's Foundation funded the fashion revolution, which in turn created this fashion transparency index. Well, I wanna know who, wh what incentive is there for them to create this kind of index or report. So do what you will with that information. I did find that pretty interesting, but at the end of the day, I think that is an important thing to kind of note because whoever's funding it, for example, back in the day, they're like, dishwashers are, you know, better water efficiency. You save water by using dishwasher. And, and basically who funded our research? The dishwasher companies, right? So, you know, that's just a, a very simple example. And then of course, again, going back to the business of fashion interview, they say transparency is key. And why is that? They think, again, according to them, their words, because they have a lot to hide. That sounds pretty negative in my opinion, but I think you also have to think about it from a supplier chain perspective because they said it's very simple. You just lay all of your cards out. I don't think that's necessarily the case all the time because if there is transparency, then there is opportunity to govern by the government and regulations. True to a certain extent, but we also know governments can be really corrupt. And I know that to be true because I live in a, a particular city called <laughs> Chicago. Um, you know, it's called a windy city for a particular reason. I think we absolutely 100% should treat every worker, every person that is as a part of a manufacturing or, you know, people in Peru, like, treat them humanely and make sure they're taken care of and not abuse human capital rights. 100% uh, agree with that. But we also have to question who is going to govern this, right? We also have government regulations and how that is going to be quote unquote manipulated sometimes, right? Or bend the rules or some loophole, right? So we need to create more of an ironclad regulation that is not just enforced by the government, but there should be other entities as well. I don't really have a particular answer, but that's just kind of my thought process and all the squirrels that's running in my head. It's like, do I don't want to wear Dior anymore? I definitely don't wear Balenci Balenciaga anymore. I don't wear Laura Piana because I've been to Peru and I was just like, all of the people there, you know, one of my best friends is Peruvian and she, you know, all of the people in Peru are super nice. So for me to want to, you know, buy Laura Pina, I don't, it's, I don't support that, right? So I had a Laura Piana bag. I have since sold that on. And then of course, coming back to like my Dior bag, I think this is my only Dior bag left. I actually wore this this past weekend to a wedding. I felt a little weird not to get on the side tangent here, but do you feel that? Are you are you boycotting Christian Dior? Are you, we all, we all have boycotted Balenciaga, right? But are you boycotting Christian Dior or Dior in general, right? I bought this, um, I wanna say two years ago. I felt a little weird wearing it, but then at the end of the day, it's just like, should I just get rid of it? Should I just boycott buying Christian Dior, never own Christian Dior's products anymore? Move on because there's a lot of people, just like, uh, like I talked about in my previous re video about why I sell, right? The, there's still plenty of janitors and um, sales associate that actually is trying to make a living, right? Like I don't want to affect the employees that are not at the executive level making these stupid decisions, if you think about it. 
Um, so yeah, you know, I think about the overall picture and not just be like, it's black and white, we need to boycott Dior, but we also have to think about how it represents me, right? I don't want to wear this bag and people see it and say, oh, she's wearing Dior. Oh my God, she must not care about human lives and human rights or anything. No, that's not the case. I care a lot, but I don't know what's going on. I bought this. I, I spent a lot of money on this. What am I supposed to do? Like dump it and like just sell it or, you know, lose money on this. I don't know. I, these are just, again, like I said, squirrels running around in my head and we're all just like boycott Dior, blah, blah, blah. Right. Well, if we're going to start anywhere creating regulations and enforcing these regulations, yes, we should. But why don't we start with replicas, right? There is absolutely zero rec uh, regulations with replicas. And yet people are talking about replicas. Oh yeah, let's not give money for the big luxury. Let's just, you know, go ahead and spend money on replicas. There is absolutely no regulations when it comes to the replica world because it is illegal, right? I'm not gonna go off on tangent. You can see I'm fired up right now, right? Go check out my video where I talk about how we feel about replicas with my friend Mandy, link down below. But if anything, we need to crack down on the replica market. I also don't think that transparency is the black and white end all, end all be all story because some companies can't always be transparent. That can be their competitive edge. Having one supplier over another supplier, they could have a really long standing ironclad contract, right? And I've seen, again, not to get sidetracked here, but I've seen enough Netflix documentaries out there. I went down a rabbit hole when it comes to like the whole chicken industry. And it's a savage world in the chicken industry. And I imagine it to be the same in every other industry, right? There are chicken farmers where they hide their chicken raising facilities because sabotaging is real. The suppliers that supplies and has a nice contract with, you know, the bigger companies like Purdue here in uh, the United States, chicken farmers will burn down chicken facilities just so that they can take over that contract because Purdue is like, well, you don't have chickens, your chickens all died. Well, guess what? Uh, I'm going to go to someone else because I still have a business to run, right? So you can't always be transparent about their suppliers. I'm going to end this video on a positive note. So stay tuned because there is a shiny example. And I think that most companies or if not all companies should strive to be as transparent as the company I'm going to talk about in a second here. And the shining example is Totem. If you seen my first initial video about reviewing indie brands, I was very impressed. They actually have changed a, a little bit, but if you go on their website, which I think they are, are taking the opportunity to hone in on that even more so, but they have a social report on an annual basis. They will list out all of the organizations that they participate in and abide by their quote unquote regulations and they get sort of cert uh, certifications from them as well. They do follow EU organizations um, and their standards and their labor laws and everything. And this is a Swedish brand if you're not familiar. So in my original video, when I looked them up, I said I was super impressed that Totem actually lists out all of their suppliers, their names, their addresses, what they source from them. But true to what I was saying in terms of the whole chicken thing, they have actually hid all of the names now in their new social report because you can't just be that transparent about who your suppliers are. And this, if you wanna take a look at that, I'll link that down below for you, but it's actually pretty impressive, right? They list out the 31 suppliers that they work with. Six of them are new and they actually terminated four different suppliers. They listed out how they do their audits, both internally and using a third party. They consider high risk countries, China, Turkey, Italy, Romania, and they do more than one audits a year. And they do show and list out how many times they visit the factory and the suppliers facilities on an annual basis, which I thought that was super cool. I'm sad that they are not part of the fashion transparency index because um, they probably would be like rating of 98% or whatever it is, right? So I really hope you enjoyed that video, found something interesting, uh, learned a thing or two, and then of course start 
gathering your thoughts. If, if this is even important to you at all, I don't know, you tell me, but this is a way of doing research and purchasing from brands that you stand behind. Um, you know, whether it's a small company like the horse that's Australian or an Italian company from Etro. And of course you got your Dior, but shockingly Saint Laurent, they have a pretty uh, transparent, um, you know, when it comes to the rating. And then of course you got open here, but I, tell me what you think. Are you boycotting Dior? Should I boycott Dior? I don't know. I, I just, I'm just having a conversation with you. So like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Comment down below. Let me know you thought this was helpful. Maybe it was just a complete waste of my time. I don't know. But life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll see you all next time.